Hello, this is Matt from New Game Plus, here to give you a quick crash course on how combat works within The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The game manages to shake up a lot of mechanics that have become standard fare within the Zelda series. Combat and procurement of weapons are just a few that have changed. Weapon management is very, very important early game, as you will have very limited space for weapons, bows and shields. Durability is also a major factor with the weapons that you manage to procure, and it also affects these items and will deteriorate and break depending on how long they are used for. To dictate which weapons are the most powerful, your weapon, shield or bow power are depicted by a numerical value when opening your stash or your inventory from the pause menu. It is important to note that the attack power of an arrow is determined by the base power of the bow, and not by the type of the arrow that is used. For example, if you're using a bow with the attack power of 4, and using bomb arrows, you'll find that you'll be doing a lot less attack than utilizing a bow with 20 damage and using normal arrows. Keep in mind the amount of arrow types as well as weapons you can use too. It's very important to play against the elemental weaknesses of an enemy, but depending on the circumstances, it can also work against you. Keep in mind that using any item made of steel while caught in lightning is a very, very bad idea. In those cases, make sure you stick to wooden clubs or spears and equip rubber shields and armor if you can. On the flip side, using wooden weapons on fire-centric enemies is an easy way to deplete your weapon stash really easily due to deterioration, so make sure you try another weapon with better durability. While locking on and sidestepping may seem very familiar to some, Breath of the Wild introduces several new features. Parrying can leave an enemy wide open by equipping a shield and timing an A button press at the right time. If you're facing several enemies at once, flurries are performed after successfully dodging an attack via backflip or sidestep and are suited best for isolating each enemy in a pack. Picking off enemies with a bow stealthily or in pursuit are both viable options. Just be wary of the arrow types and use them to your advantage. For example, bomb arrows for splash damage, just as long as you don't get caught in the blast radius yourself. If you're looking to capitalize on some extra damage, headshots performed by the bow deal double the normal amount, along with stealth attacks from behind enemies. Double damage also applies to all weapons that are thrown, though due to durability concerns, it renders the weapon pretty much broken if the attack connects. To get the most out of your weapons, be sure to use it until you receive the on-screen notification that it's badly damaged. At that point, the weapon can then be thrown. This will be a guaranteed weapon break, but it will ensure you are maximizing the amount of damage output, as well as getting the most out of that weapon. Lastly, it pays well to have a low power weapon in your stash at all times, whether it be a torch, a leaf, or even some bones. This is used to dispatch lower tier grunts that die in one hit regardless of weapons you use. This applies to goblins and skeletons at night that may regenerate if you knock their head off. This helps considerably so that you can save your more powerful weapons for more dangerous encounters as well as boss battles. And that concludes our quick cap on the combat in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you manage to get your hands on the game, and if you love or hate the combat, be sure to sound off here in the comments section below, as well as liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel here at New Game Plus TV. Thank you very much guys, and enjoy your time in high.